Hey, what's going on guys, it's Anson. So I'm gonna show you guys how to set up a simple web application because we can do whatever we want with our virtual private server. We don't necessarily have to just host Discord bots, okay? So let's go ahead and set up a simple Node.js application. Uh, we're gonna be using Express. So I'm gonna go ahead and just simply make a directory called Express app. And we're gonna just initialize uh, the repository with NPM. Awesome. So we'll do npm i express and we're just going to set up a very simple application. So I'm going to go and just do vim app.js and I'll just do const express equals require express. So this is just the standard express application. We're not going to be doing anything crazy. And I'll just do app.listen. Just going to hard code the port just for testing purposes. Console log running on port 3000. Not sure why I used template syntax, but we'll just leave it alone for now. Okay, and let's just set up a simple route. So what I'm doing here is I'm just importing express and I'm initializing the express application and storing inside the app variable. And down here, I'm listening to port 3000. So when we want to access our application, we need to type in our IP address and then port 3000. So we're going to do app.get slash. So we're passing the rec and res object. So that's the request handler. And we'll just send back some JSON. So let's just say message hello. Whoops. There we go. So let's go ahead and run our app now. So we're running on port 3000. So now if I try to go to the application, let me just open up my new tab. All right. So to now actually access our application. We're going to need to paste in our IP address. Now, obviously, you know, we don't have a domain name yet. So I'm just going to leave it like this for now. And then we'll do port 3000. And you can see that we can actually access it. And anyone else can actually access this endpoint as well. The reason why is because we don't have a firewall enabled. So for example, if I refresh right now, I just close my application and you can see that we can't reach anymore. Now we want to make sure that we enable a firewall. So let's go ahead and do UFW status and you're going to see, oh, let's do sudo UFW status. And you're going to see that our status is inactive. So we need to actually start up our firewall. So we enable, okay. So we need to make sure that when we enable the firewall, we're allowing SSH. So now we have our firewall enabled, okay. And I can still actually, just run this application and you can see now I actually can't access port 3000 because we have our firewall enabled. Now if I do you have to sudo if to disable and if I run the app again, I can access again. Okay, so let's enable UFW again. Okay, and let's add a rule. So let's say UFW allow 3000. Let's do sudo actually sudo UFW allow 3000. So this allows connections to port 3000. So right now our application is offline. Let's do node app.js. Okay, let's refresh. And now we have access to port 3000. Well, any, uh, anyone can access this now, not just us. Okay, and you can also set more advanced rules. You can set it so that only a specific IP address can access this port. Okay, which is pretty cool. So let's do UFW show sudo UFW status. And you can see right over here, we have our firewalls active and we allowed port 3000 right over here. Now let's say, for example, if I try to SSH into the server now, you're going to see that it's actually not going to let us. And the reason why is because we turned on the firewall. So it's actually blocking connections with SSH as well. So we need to enable it and it's very easy. We just do sudo UFW allow SSH. And you're going to see that if I do sudo UFW status, you can see right over here, port 22 TCP allow and then from anywhere. So now you can see that this actually was sent before it took it before it delayed like 10 seconds. And after we allowed it, it works again. So let's try it again. And you can see we are able to actually SSH into our server, which is awesome. All right, and we can do a lot of other things too. Okay, but here's the problem though. 
why should we allow the user to access port 3000? Okay, in an actual application, you never want someone to type in your domain name and then specify a port. Okay, and especially if you have a lot of applications, that means you're going to have to open up a lot of ports. So can you imagine having like 50 ports being opened up just for an application? Now, this is where Nginx comes in. Now, I use Nginx. Uh, there's also a pot, Apache as well. But personally, I like Nginx. I've been using it for the past year and a half since I've been developing applications. And personally, I like it a lot. Okay, and I'll suggest you guys look into Nginx. It's very useful. Basically, there's a lot of things that it does, but the important thing that you need to understand about Nginx is that it's mainly used for web serving, reverse proxying, caching, load balancing, so many things. And of course, you can just read all about it. You just Google it, and uh, there's a lot of things that it can do. Okay, but the main thing that we want Nginx to do is to you we want to use Nginx as a proxy loader okay and that's pretty much it so what we're going to do is we're going to install Nginx so I'm simply just going to go right over here so I'm going to go ahead and just type sudo apt update okay and we're going to go and do sudo apt install Nginx all right, so let's just continue. Okay, awesome. So now we have Nginx installed. And what we want to do is we want to just simply set up the firewall. So that way it can actually access the service. We're going to do sudo ufw app list. And then you can see that there are actually three profiles right over here. And what we're going to do is we're just simply going to say sudo, wait, sudo ufw status, sudo ufw allow nginx http. There we go. And then we can do sudo ufw status. We can see that we have nginx http working. So now let's actually verify that nginx is working right now. So we can do system ctl status nginx. And we can see that it's running. So if I actually try to go to right over here, you can see that nginx is working which is awesome now i can always stop nginx by doing sudo systemctl stop nginx and if i try to check the status it's going to say that it is inactive and i refresh you can see that it's just going to keep loading here we go and we can always start it up by just simply doing system or you know sudo systemctl start nginx and we can verify the status you can see that it's active. Perfect. All right, there we go. And that's pretty much it for installing Nginx. Okay, and if we wanted to obviously reference our web page, we would reference it from the IP address. So now this comes the tricky part. We want to set up server blocks. Okay, because basically, let's say, for example, if we wanted to host a bunch of different websites on our web server, we don't necessarily need to buy a new server every single time we want to host a different website. We can use Nginx to host as many websites as we want. And we can all and we can even use different domains for different parts of our websites all on one server, which is freaking awesome. So what we're going to do is we're simply just going to go ahead and set up a server block. Unfortunately, I don't have a domain name to use at the moment so i can't show you guys how to do that maybe in another video but we're just going to set up a very simple server block so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to go ahead and do sudo mcdir p var www and we'll just call this uh sample uh, slash html okay and now we're going to go ahead and just assign ownership of the directory so we'll do sudo say shown hyphen r user user and then var www sample slash html there we go so now we own this directory as with our account over here so let's go ahead and next thing we want to do is we want to go inside this directory so let's cd in here and this is where you want to put your file like your html file so i'm going to go ahead and simply just do uh, touch index.html and then we'll do nano index.html and I'm going to just simply do an h1 hello world h1 okay here we go so let's just verify that we 
Saved it, perfect. So now, what we need to do next is we need to actually set up the server block. So to do that, we're simply just going to do sudo nano slash etc nginx sites available. Okay, and you can see right over here that we actually have this default right over here, but that's not what we want. Okay, we don't want to modify the default. So instead, what's better is we want to copy this default right over here. So let me actually cd into slash etc nginx sites available. You see the default. Okay, so I'm just simply going to go ahead and do cp default and I'm going to name it as sample. Sudo cp default sample. Perfect. So let's go ahead and just, I'm going to use vim. Okay, and you can see that we already have content inside over here. So if I go down here, you can, I don't know if you guys can see this, but it's very green and it's hard to actually see. All right, there we go. That should be better. We will leave it like this for now. Hopefully it should be all right. But you can see that we have this file over here. And what I'm going to just do is I'm simply just going to go right over here. Okay, you can see where we have the root. And we're just simply going to change this root to sample slash HTML. We're going to just simply exit. Whoops. Oh wait, we're only we're in read mode only. Hold on. Pseudo vim sample. Let's go down here. Sample HTML. Okay, there we go. So now what we need to do is we need to create a sip link. So we need to enable this server block. So we're gonna do sudo ln hyphen s slash etc slash nginx if sites available and then the server blocks of sample and we're going to enable it by linking it to nginx slash sites enabled you can see defaults there but we are going to leave it like this okay so we just create the link and now we can go ahead and actually try to just make sure our config is working so you see that it says it, the test failed. That's because there's a duplicate default server. So we're gonna go ahead and just uh, edit the default right now. And we're going to go ahead and just change this server right over here. So this is the nice part about Nginx. You can actually change up the server for every single server block. So for example, this server is now gonna listen on port 8080, but on our sample, we're, it's going to listen on port 80. So now you can see that it is successful. So we're going to restart Nginx. And if I go here, we have hello world. See how that works? And of course we can have all of our other CSS and JavaScript inside that same folder. Okay, and that's pretty straightforward. All right, but now here's the thing though, right? So we have this hello world thing, but what if we wanted to actually access that port 3000 application that we were working with earlier. So let's go back here. Let's go back to express app. And what I want to do is let me open up app.js now. So it's running on port 3000. And like I said, we can still access it. Okay, let's close this out. Let's use PM2 to run this application. And let's just call this express app. So now our application is working just fine. But we need to disable the port because, like I said, you don't want to expose the port. So sudo ufw status to check the status. We're going to go ahead and do sudo ufw deny 3000. So that's going to deny connections. You can see that now we are denying connections to port 3000. And if we refresh, it's not going to let us access it. So this is where Nginx becomes very, very useful. Okay, one of the many, many things that Nginx can take care of. Let's go back into the config file or the sites available. And let's edit the sample server block now. We have to use sudo. Okay, so now let's go right over here. Okay, and let's just say for example, let's say this application, pretend this application was some kind of users api right it took care of giving user data so let's do location slash user so this is kind of like another path okay and we're going to just do a proxy underscore pass and we're going to pass in http colon slash slash local host four three thousand so this is kind of like a redirect okay nginx is going to take in that request 
at the slash user location and it's going to pass it along to here. So now instead of going to plug in thousand, I can now go to, oh, wait, I have to restart it. But if I try to do users right now, it's not going to work. As you can see, it's not found. So let's just validate our nginx config file. I always want to do sudo nginx hyphen t. So now we can do sudo system ctl restart nginx. All right. And now if I refresh, see how it says cannot get users. Our express application is being hit. Okay. The problem with this right now is that it's passing along that slash users route to express so express doesn't actually handle that users route but we can actually just go inside our express application and right over here so right over here you can just go right over here and go inside vim and you can have a simple route this is app.get slash and we can just simply do users so when we actually access users this is the route that's actually going to be hit okay so let's just do that and let's just simply send res.send name Anson page 22. So you kind of just have to play around with it. So now this route is going to be handled. So when we actually visit our slash users location, it's going to proxy pass it and it's going to pass along to handle this router over here. Okay, so we can actually just get rid of this uh, slash route since we don't need it. And let's just start our express app okay so now watch this if I refresh you can see we're actually hitting this endpoint over here and I can add a bunch of other routes as well so let's go back into app.js okay and we can just do another app.get slash users slash slash users slash I don't know search for, for something and let's just do a simple return. And you might imagine that this is this part is probably just going to fetch some user from a database. So we can send back an array of data. We'll just send an empty array. Oops. <laughs> oh my god. There we go. Let's just make sure that was all good. Okay, awesome. So let's just restart our application now. Okay, there we go. So now if I refresh, it should be fine. And if I do search, we have an empty array. And this is a simple API. So you can imagine that you can actually start to build out APIs and then allow other people to hit your endpoint. Obviously, you wouldn't want to just give them access to it immediately. You might want to consider using some kind of authentication to prevent people from actually, you know, abusing your API. But that's pretty much the gist of it. So hopefully this helped you guys out with setting up Nginx. And I plan on continuing this and um, showing you guys how to deploy Angular or React or Vue.js applications. So let me know down below in the comments if you guys would like any specific videos on Nginx or just deployments. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace.